happy. I'm Diane Brownstein. I am the editor in chief here at uh, SoPub.com, and I want to welcome Cynthia Watros. Thank you so much for coming, and we really appreciate it. I did want to give everybody a heads up that we're having a few technical difficulties. So if you could put all your questions for Cynthia in the chat, we will probably um, be just saying if this is from blah, 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 here's a question. Um, but we want to definitely get to your questions. So without further ado, I'm going to toss everything to Michael and you guys have fun today. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. And thank you, uh, blah, 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 for being here. I wasn't sure you were going to make it. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Hi, um, <laughs> Cynthia, thank you so much for joining us this evening. It is so lovely to see you as always. Well, thank you for having me, Michael. It's always a pleasure seeing you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, loving the show right now, but we wanted to ask you, you know, as the holidays are upon us, and this is the third year in a row now that we're getting through them with COVID. And there are so many challenges that are going on. <clears throat> there are already books out there about how to simplify your Christmas that are years old. And now that we appear to have even more challenges, what do you think are some things that people can do to kind of help make the holidays a little bit easier and, 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 and to enjoy them more? What a great question. Yeah, enjoying the holidays is all our goals, right? I mean, um, so the first thing I would say is look at my tree. This is the first year that I haven't put any bulbs or anything. It's very basic. I just hung up a couple of signs. Um, so I'm showing you that because I, you might just not do everything that you normally do. Um, you might just be okay with scaling everything down. Um, put up whatever decorations you want to put up or don't put up any. It's, I think it's the whole idea that we have to live up to the holidays, that we have to perform and do all this stuff and we have to be happy and it has to be perfect and our family has to really get along and just, just, um, just try as much as you can to just sit with yourself and really ask those questions of, what is this going to, how am I going to have this holiday um, be joyful for me? Um, and maybe that is putting a bunch of bulbs on the tree and maybe that's just putting up a sign on the tree. Um, so don't, don't feel like you have to do stuff. Just do what makes your heart feel good and happy. And, um, and I say, come from that place and then everything else will sort of, I, I say, take a deep breath and, and ease into it. And if it doesn't look like it did four years ago or even last year, that's okay. That's okay. You know, live in the present moment. Um, and again, it, it doesn't have to look like anything. Nobody's having the perfect Christmas. I, I'm telling you, nobody out there is having, yay, this is my, the best Christmas I've ever had. I can, if you are, then you need to text me or, or email me. Um, so you're not alone in this, in this challenging time. So just, just remember, stay with yourself, breathe, and just um, try to enjoy even the little things, take a walk, whatever it is. Um, it doesn't have to be big. I, I think one of the things we've learned is that when we look at other people's Instagrams and we see this fabulous life they have, and sometimes my most you know exciting, fun posts are the ones that get the most likes. And Yes, there's truth to the post, but it's not always it's not always the full story either. It, so I, I think that the approach people have, not taking Instagram so seriously, or, or to look at it and assume that everything's perfect, is something that that's something we can bring into the holidays as well. It sounds like exactly, Michael. I I couldn't agree more. You know, I always tease that if I grew up with. Remember that show Married with Children? Um, sure. I didn't really watch it, but it was like this dysfunctional family. I probably would have had a, a tiny bit more happier childhood because I grew up with the Brady Bunch, sort of this idea of everything is perfect and everyone was dressed beautifully and everyone's hair was great and, and everyone got along most of the time. And um, it just wasn't necessarily my reality. So I think we've got to just know that what we see out there on social media, on TV. I, it's a good thing today we get more shows that are more realistic, but 
Um, but on social media, it's all just, a lot of it is just make believe and pretend and sort of, um, so, so don't think you're alone. If you don't, if you, if you're not having the best holiday, or if you don't have the best relationships in your family, you're not alone, you're not alone. And I, I know that some families like, they might, <laughs> excuse me, have a situation where everyone buys a present for everyone, which can get, you know, stressful and expensive. And yet, I know one year my family just said, let's do a grab where we pull one name out of the hat. And that kind of made it a little bit more special, a little more cost effective and a little less, a little more fun, a lot more fun. Yeah. Yeah. I love that idea. I think that's a great idea because it's a lot of stress buying gifts, isn't it? Um, so I, no, go ahead. So I was thinking, you know, I, I was thinking about what if you made a sort of even just like a little book, not a, like a fancy book, just like a, a little card or something. And you just wrote down how the person, let's say it's to your mother, because my mother is super important to me. And I wrote down like uh, all the ways that she makes my life better or changed my life or, you know, um, and then wrote them all down and gave it to the person. It doesn't cost any money. And I'm telling you, if I got that, I would cherish it for the rest of my life right. um, because we don't hear those things. And how lovely would that be? How meaningful um, if you got something, it doesn't cost anything. So little things like that. Um, and like you did, Michael, grabbing names out of a hat and just um, yeah. that's that's lovely. I love that idea. And then, you know, if you, if you volunteer to go first, you can like look at the name real quick and then pop it You're back. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, one thing I love about um, on, on soap operas is that, is that uh, well, it must be fun for you guys because you get to see all the holiday decorations a lot earlier than the rest of us. Although maybe not given that what department stores do and getting them right out after Labor Day, it seems sometimes. Right. But, but it must be fun seeing the holiday spirits and, and the sets all decorated and, and festive. Oh, it's great. And they do an amazing job. Like I get a lot of, I don't do a lot of decorating, but I'm like, oh, I like how they paired right. the trees up and the different colors. I never would have expected that. And then they put the little things in there. Like, I don't have that eye. Like I can't look at something and go, you know what that needs? That needs some green. You know, I don't, I'm just like, um, I don't know. It just doesn't look right. Um, I wish I had that. So when I walk on the set, um, and they have all the decorations and stuff, it's, I'm, I'm just in awe, um, because they have such a, a great eye and you know, it's Christmas when it's a little hot on set and you're wearing these big coats and you have to pretend you're cold. Yeah. So I'm like, Oh, I'm sweating, <laughs> you know, and you're waiting for, and they're like, remember it's in New York and it's in the winter. And we're like, sweating makeup's like trying to um but it's great it's I love I love the seasons on the show and yeah like you said Michael we always celebrate it on the show earlier than in real life um I have to be honest when the pool in the set mm -hmm. goes up I'm always so happy because I love summer and I love spring so when I see that when they're and it's hard to put up that big pool when I see them bring in the pool and I'm like, yay, it's summer. Um, so when I see the Christmas trees and stuff, it's, it's really nice. Yeah. That is an amazing set because from what I understand, it is about three feet deep so that people can actually do laps. It's amazing. And it's heated. And I swear, I think we have to hire a person just to clean it and just to make sure, you know, that we're not growing any sort of science experiment, making any science experiment in the, the pool. Right. Um, yeah. But it's, I, yeah, I love that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one thing I like on soap operas as well around the time of the holidays is, and, and fans actually have no problem with this, to my understanding, because they also want to take some time out and enjoy the holidays. And so at the shows, when people, the characters, who might not necessarily get along, they'll put all that aside for the holidays. And I know that um, 
all the shows have done that. I know uh, Guiding Light used to do the the holidays up really big. Do you remember, have any memorable Christmases that you shot on Guiding Light? Annie was always in turmoil. I mean, she was all either drunk. Like I remember, I think there was a Thanksgiving that I showed up and I was like, ah, you know, and um, so she wasn't invited to a lot of things. Um, but Alan, you know, when I was with Alan, I think, I think I remember he had like a Christmas party or something. Um, but yeah, Annie was sort of a people, I think people were afraid to invite her to, to holiday events because who knows what she would have done. Timing and all. And yeah, and, and sometimes the richer the family, the more miserable the Christmas um, uh, yeah. as Spalding's. But um, I'm but sure yeah. I was trying to like kidnap some children or something to, yeah, something. I was, I was doing something mischievous. It's about giving. So I think that's, that's good. You were, you were giving a great story. Um, uh, are there any, um, have you traveled much the last few years for the holidays? Because traveling is always a, a stressful period under any circumstances. People are wearing heavy coats. They're bringing presents on board. They're shoving each other. It, it's really kind of, it's almost comical if, if people could laugh about it. Um, but I, I don't know that they usually can in the moment. Have you had to travel for the holidays? No, Michael, ever since... I haven't traveled a whole lot since COVID and stuff. And yeah, but traveling is, I love to travel. And in for, before the soap, I was traveling all the time for work. And um, the only thing I can say about that, or I might have a couple things, is first of all, just always try to be early, right? So mm -hmm. you don't have that, that panic, like uh, because the lines are super long. And, and be the person that, that others can learn from. So if someone's trying to like muscle into your line, if you can, let them. Like always come from a place of um, of be the, the 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 change you want to see. Exactly, Michael. And and, and it's 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 very um, it, it catches on. People will see it and um, maybe do it to someone else. Um, so. Try as much as you can to, to just come from a place of like giving and peace and love and who knows what will happen. They might not thank you. You might let some person in and they might just be like, yeah, and that's okay too. Just keep you, you just be always the ray of, of light as much as you can and show the world that it can be a kind place, um, but it can start with you and spread it. Um, it's very contagious. So um, be um, a light spreader out there. That's yep. what I can say about I that. Think that's, I think that's great. Um, uh, one year at the daytime Emmys, uh, uh, Sid and Marty Croft, they did all those Saturday morning uh, live animated, uh, live action shows with uh, puppet characters like HR Pup and stuff. Um, oh. Yeah, you're probably a little too young to remember that because it was like early 70s stuff. Um, anyway, uh, the reason I remember is they, he and his brother, Sid and Marty Croft, uh, they won the Lifetime Achievement Award. And that's a time where you, you, you really got all the ears on. And Marty had said, um, here's some advice he tries to live by. Uh, on the worst day of your life, try to help someone. And that uh, made a lasting impression, I think, on a lot of people in the room. Really shows who you are inside, right? When, when it's not easy to be nice. Right. Um, but you're still not, when I say nice, I mean, um, just kind. And um, it's not, it's not easy when you're stuck in traffic or when you're having a bad day to, to, to be kind and look out for others. But um I think those are, like you said, Michael, it's a really good point. Those, those are the times that really, really try to do it um, because that, that shows a strong character. I think. And, and I think that's an important distinction you made, the difference between um, nice and kind. A lot of people are nice, which is like a momentary passing of being cordial. But kind is 
uh, really assessing what someone might be going through in a situation and then acting accordingly. Yeah. And, you know, I was always brought up like, you're a girl, be nice, be nice. And I, you know, growing up, you're a strong woman. And so I have a little thing about like, oh, make sure you're nice. So I like to, I like to just say, just be kind. You don't always have to be like, oh no, you know, but be, um, be be thoughtful to other people. And, you know, you're going to take care of, of yourself and honor yourself, but that doesn't mean that you can't um, be thoughtful and put yourself out there and, and help others too. Right. Do you have any uh, big holiday plans this year? I Did don't. I think um, I, I'm still debating on what to do. My girls are coming home. I have twins that are 21 and um, wow, I can't and I'm so and I'm so excited um, because my one girl didn't um, come home for Thanksgiving, so I was missing her. And so they're both going to be here, and so I'm going to just like love them so hard. Um, so we might we might take little. Uh, I know we're going to see the Christmas car- a Christmas Carol and. Um, we're going to do like very traditional, like what we, I always love bringing them to plays and um, we might go to Disneyland one day. It's probably going to be really super crazy, but that's okay. We're together uh, and have dinners and just sit and chat. And um, I'm just going to hug them a lot and um, maybe we'll decorate the tree. Maybe we won't. It's okay. Uh, but yeah, no, no big plans. Just, just loving each other as much as we can. That sounds really nice. That sounds really nice. Um, what about you, Michael? I, uh, I have a lot of plans to um, see a lot of important people in my life and I'm really looking forward to it. Yay. Yeah, it's kind of nice um, where, where the town does tend to shut down a little bit, in, you know, in, in showbiz Hollywood. So, um, that's kind of nice. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. It's a solid time to just take it down a little bit and then gear up for the crazy new year. Yes. Um, and uh, I think I think we might want to go to some questions now. Um, Diane, should I read them or do you want to read them? Um, you can, if you want, uh, unless it's whatever's easiest for you, Michael. No, uh, let me do it. I'll scroll here a little bit and, um, and say, um, uh, not a question, but Cynthia, I think you did an amazing, do an amazing job with the role of Nina. You perfected her mannerisms and the way she speaks, looks, etc. And that is from Denisha M of Riverside. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Well, thank you. Um, I love Nina. I um, I love playing her, all her different sides. Um, I always say this, she's not perfect. She's human, um, but she has a really good heart, you know? Um, so thank you for saying that, I appreciate it. And let's see, we also have, um... Well, here's a good question from Rachel Flam. Um, how would I get into this industry, which is bigger than ever? Well, Rachel, I think the first thing you have to do is really sit with yourself and go, is there anything else? Is there anything else I can do besides uh, act? If it's in the industry, you mean being an actor? Um, and if the, the, the answer is no, this is what I want to do, then you're on the road. Um, you have to, you have to want to act. You have to not only want to act, but you have to act. It's in your blood. You have to do it. Um, and then you go and you, you get into some sort of training. It could be, um, I don't know where you are in your life, but it could be a conservatory or it could be just acting classes. And what's great about those things is you are in a atmosphere where not only you're learning, hopefully you're learning, but you're with other creative people. 
and they might have like, oh, did you hear about that audition down the street? Um, you're in that world of the acting world. And I think you, it's really hard to be an actor when you don't have any sort of um, ability to hear about acting, to, to read plays, to, to <clears throat> be around other actors, to, to see what they're doing to, to get jobs. So I think put yourself in um, a position where uh, you're getting knowledge, knowledge, acting knowledge, and also, well, what's Julie doing? Oh, she's auditioning this way, or she met this agent this way, and and get go to the library, get books about like, uh, you know, um, miser technique. Just see what educate yourself, fill your mind with what what kind of actor do you want to be? Do you want to be a stage actor? Do you want to be a television or do you want to be a film or do you not know and you just want to do it? Do you want to do community theater? Community theater is fantastic. You get all this like amazing um, experience and it's usually really loving and, and, and kind place to go and, and, and act. So I, I love community theater. So however you can fill yourself with, with that world, I say, do it. Put yourself in that world um, as much as possible. There are also a lot of great books out there. Um, God, there's a real old one. I bet you can find it on Amazon. And whether you want to get into performing or, or any other part of the business, I, th I found it to be really helpful. It was a book by a woman named Nina Blanchard, who was a big model agent and she wrote a book about how to get into the modeling and acting world and I found that the advice in it was applicable to just how to present yourself professionally so that people take you seriously um, and I think her last name would be B-L-A-N-C-H-A-R-D first name Nina ironically N-I-N-A and um, if you go to Amazon I bet you could find it um, uh, and I think that's great advice, Cynthia. Absolutely. Yeah, and just know, Rachel, you don't have to look a certain way or or just be you. Just be you um, and find a, like a niche for you. Um, so don't so you're you're good. You just fill your mind with knowledge and and really believe that you can do it. And don't let the no stop you. That's another thing. Don't let because you're gonna hear a thousand million no's and you're going to hear so much criticism and reasons why you shouldn't do it but again you ask yourself can i live a happy life not doing this and you said no if that's what your answer was so don't let anyone tell you that you shouldn't then do it uh, we have another question this might be a natural segue into what cynthia was just saying um, from thane pullen our friend who's come to many uh, Zooms before, he's asked, what's been the biggest challenge of your career? Great question. I think it changed. Um, so I've been doing this for over 20 years. I think it changed. It changes as I'm in it. I think at the beginning, it was getting my foot into the door, getting people to see me, um, uh, finding an agent. And then after that, it's determination. Like, again, like I said, not letting the no's get you down. I mean, I'm not saying like you hear a no and you're like, oh, you know, you're not unhappy, but you can't be unhappy for too long because you're going to miss the next opportunity. Right. So when I would not get a, like, if I would test for a show and I ended up not getting it, I would let myself cry for the night. The next day you get up and you prepare for the next one because you don't want your disappointment, the no's, to stop you from what you should have. And the job that you're supposed to have could be the next day, right? Um, so that was a challenge to learn that, not to be too upset about the job you didn't get, because you know you have to, you have to keep going and, and believe in yourself. Um, so believing in yourself is a huge thing. So that was also a, a challenge for me is like, believe, believe, believe. You can do this. You can do this. And now um, I think the challenges now would be, you know, if I have a hard day, let's say I'm playing Nina 
and Nina has a very soft heart and um, Cynthia has a very soft heart. And if she's going through a lot, sometimes I'll carry that. Like I'll leave the set and I'll just carry it with me into my dressing room. I was doing these gratitude cards. And for those of you who know what I'm talking about, um, and I said I was going to be there every day, I was going to do these gratitude cards um, for December. And I had to stop because I was feeling like I was carrying this Nina sadness with me. Um, and I couldn't get out of it. I think that's a challenge for me now is to, um, to shake off. And it's funny because I didn't have this before is to shake off um, when she's going through this huge event and uh, to shake it off a little bit more, maybe because I love her so much and I feel her um, that it stays in. And maybe because of everything that we're going through, my heart just seems a little softer. And so I don't know what it is. Um, things affect me a little bit more when I'm on stage. So life is like a roller coaster, right, Michael? And just when you think, hey, I'm riding high, I'm so happy, I can never see myself be down ever again. I don't know why I was down when I was down. I'll never, that'll never happen to me again. And then poof, yeah. you'll, you'll be like, oh, what happened? And then, but just know, no feeling lasts forever. Um, so just keep saying that to yourself, no feeling lasts forever. So it's really great to be super high and happy and enjoy it. Right. Be like, and acknowledge it and, and really like celebrate it. But when you're feeling down, it's not like, why is this happening to me? It's the natural way that life works. It's just Sometimes we forget that the highs and lows are just what we go through in life. So I don't know if I answered your question, but I think right now the challenge is um, uh, letting Nina's sadness not get into um, Cynthia's skin. Well, what you talk about sounds like it would be a tremendous, um, I don't know if assets the right word, but something wonderful to bring to your scenes. It is. And as a human being, but when the world kind of like says, <clears throat> hey, we're going to stomp on you today. Uh, sometimes I, you know, when that happens to me, I'll think, gosh, I wish I weren't so nice. <laughs> and some people would probably think I'm not, but um, uh, is, it a, is, is it a blessing and a curse to be so... <clears throat> you know, good. Well, I wouldn't change you for the world, Michael. So I keep your goodness. Um, I know it's, it's having a soft heart is not always easy. Is it? Um, yeah, I guess I that's think, what I was. but I think everyone that I'm looking at out here and that I meet, um, there, there's goodness. I mean, so we all have to deal with, um, I mean, there's walls and stuff. So we all have to deal with our own um, um, feeling of, I don't know, sadness and, and whatever you're feeling, but all of our hearts are, are good and all of our hearts want to love and be loved and all that stuff. That's what we have in common. Um, and it's just about, um, you know, I always say when I die, I just want someone to, to put on my whatever, a rock or whatever, um, well, she tried. Like, just like she tried, um, she tried her best in life. Like we all try our best. Um, and I'd rather have all your sweet hearts and I'd rather have like, um, an open heart than a closed heart with a bunch of walls. So I feel very blessed that I have this, this heart that I do. And I've, and I honor all of your beautiful shining hearts. And I know it's not easy, but do your best in your life, not to close that heart up, um, keep feeling, and maybe that'll hurt a little bit, but man, it's worth it. Just keep that heart open. Um, I think this is a, a natural, uh, question to ask next from, um, Heidi Lynn Jenke. I hope I have that right. But, um, she writes, Nina, uh, Cynthia, rather, I totally believe and feel that you would make a great therapist if you were not an actress. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's never too late, right? 
um, I, I love, um, I, I love, I don't know. I think I love the, oops, I lost my dog just jumped off my lap. Um, I love the, the mind and the journey on, um, how to get through this life, finding a little peace in here, uh, and in here. And I think if you are interested in finding peace or more peace, um, there are things out there that you can do. And that's what I really am interested in, like, you know, meditation and yoga. And I would teach the, the breathing. And that's an amazing thing. For those of you that don't know, I call this the starfish breathing where you inhale and then you exhale and you inhale. So those little things, I think, um, really help to bring back, bring you back to who you really are. So when you do those things, you're actually shedding off the world and you're coming back to your true essence. Your true essence is this amazing person and with a lot of light and love and happiness and joy. But because the world is the way it is, it likes to pile on all this stuff like you're wearing like a suit. So um, there's a bunch of things that you can do to, to just peel off. And then you're like, ha, ah, I see me. I see who I am. Um, and so if you're interested in that, um, man, I could, uh, maybe what I'll do is one next time I'm in my dressing room, I'll just mention a, like some books. And again, meditation is great. And, um, you know, it really help around the holidays if you did some breathing techniques and stuff. And you can always look on YouTube and, and um, find those breathing techniques. I don't know if I answered your question. Oh, you are. I, I think you're doing an amazing job. Of Thank you, Michael. All these questions. This is Dobby. Um, Dobby. How long have you had Dobby? What a cutie. It's a year now. He's a shelter dog. Um, I've never had a dog like this before. He. <laughs> so I'm from Michigan and we would have animals and it'd just be like, okay, high five you. And we would just feed him, you know, regular grocery store food. But this dog has such a sense of stomach. He's on a special diet. He has to have probiotics. He's like, you know, he gets massages. <laughs> this dog. Yeah. LA dog. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. But I love him so much. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, uh, Caitlin, I'm going to get this wrong. Bayakshi uh, would like to know if you ever get stage fright. That's a really interesting question. You know, I think stage fright, how oh, stage fright is a horrible thing for an actor uh, because it, it comes on and you don't even sometimes know that it's going to come on. Um, and sometimes you don't even know why it happens more with theater. Like when I remember before I would, you'd be waiting in the wings and you'd be like, okay, um, with TV, you have a chance to do it again. You know, if you mess up, you can mess up and they'll just start again. Um, but yeah, say I do. Uh, and just again, like life, you think that you're, I'm never going to get stage fright again. I'm never going to worry about my lines. It's all going to be great. And then one day you could wake up on a Wednesday and you're on set and you're like, your heart is beating and you're breathing faster. And you're like, what, what happened? So again, if you just, you know, breathe and, and realize that, um, I think you're moving away from yourself when you get stage fright. Like you're, you're looking at people maybe that could judge you. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that makes it worse. So again, sit with yourself and go, it's okay. And, and, and try to come back to the breath. Um, but yeah, stage fright. I still, I still once in a while, I'll, I'll get it. It'll, it'll like cover me like anxiety. Um, and, uh, and then, I'll, then I'll go. It, it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, I love the, uh, the chats you do on your Insta stories with, uh, from your dressing room, because um, it just seems like it's really bringing people into the world that's just literally adjacent to 
you know the stage and and it's 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 your it's where you do your your thing and i can tell from what i see in the background that you are a big uh admirer of uh eddie davis yes um what is it about her that um that you like i think i liked because um i mean i don't mean to say this so everyone will feel sorry for me, but I was never the pretty girl. Um, I was never um, the one that the guys wanted to like date and be with. And um, what I liked about Betty Davis when I was a kid watching her movies is she didn't worry about being beautiful. Like there were a lot of movies she was in and she purposely made herself look pretty bad. And, but her acting was, so on it and and I I was just I was just enthralled with the way she didn't care about the way she looked and right. she, character meant more than looks um and that really um spoke to me that character means more than looks um is is how you know I would love to have the rest of my career with that motto, character means more than looks. And unfortunately in this business, you get a lot of comments about your looks and stuff. And, and I have a thick skin with stuff like that because I've heard them all my life. And um, again, I'm not looking to be like, oh, but Cynthia, you know, I've just, you just hear it. I think as a woman, and if you're not like, I don't know, supermodel or whatever. Um, so you get a thick skin pretty quickly about like people commenting on whatever they're going to comment on. Um, but that's why I like her is, um, and I'll, and I'll always like, if, if I'm feeling down or, or, um, at home and I just need a comfort thing, I'll just turn on one of her movies and yeah, whatever happened to baby Jane. I love that. Um, Jen Edelson would like to know what is your favorite Betty Davis movie. Whatever happened to Baby Jane, uh, I really like, yeah. Cause she just, she put it all out there and she was just so wonderful. If you haven't seen it, please watch it. You know, it's, I love it. Did you see uh, Feud with Susan Sarandon and Jessica um, Wine? Mm -hmm. What did you think of that? Loved it. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, Tiffany and several other people are posting in the chat that you are gorgeous. You are beautiful. You are the pretty girl inside and out, I will add. And, um, and I think it's important that I share that. Thank you. Um, is there ever any improvising that you are allowed to do um, on General Hospital? You know, I want to say yes, sort of. Um, you have to you have to memorize your lines. You can't be like, ah, I have a script here. You can't be like, ah, I got it. You know, um, you have to have the the lines down. But if you um, if you make it more your own and it just kind of flows more naturally out of your mouth, saying a sentence a certain way rather than exactly how they wrote it, then that's, a, that's good. I have a tendency of, of really feeling from, so we have the dress, uh, I always call it dress rehearsal, but it's um, the, the rehearsal and the, the taping. And it, it, it's just like a minute between the two, right? I have a habit of changing it a little bit when the cameras are on, um, just because I feel like acting is like a living, breathing thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm sometimes amazed, like, oh, I didn't know I was going to say that, um, right. that it, it, it moves and it, it's a different shape. So s most of the time when it comes from a place of, wow, that was, I didn't expect that they'll let it go, you know, cause I think it's authentic, I guess, I hope it's authentic and uh, it's coming not from a screw you writers. I'm not going to say your lines. It's coming more from um, making the scene better. Well, making the scene uh, like honoring the fact that it's a it's a 
a living thing. If that right. makes any sense, does that make it sense? Does. It does like, because it has because, breath, you know. You know, yeah. I mean, I it's I would imagine you know running it, and then when you make that extra commitment to bringing it to life, it you know it, it takes on a life. Um, yeah. And that uh, improvisational question, which was a, a wonderful question, but I can't take credit for it. Uh, Stacy Massey was what it came up with that. So thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Stacy. Um, and uh, uh, do you miss doing comedy? I do. I don't, I try to interject comedy as yes. much as I can with Nina, as much as I can. Um, she's very funny. I think she's very funny and I think she makes fun of herself. Um, at least I think so. And um, yeah, I do. I miss, you know, the whole primetime life um, was pretty amazing and I, and I loved it. Um, but, you know, it's very unpredictable. So you're on a primetime show and you get picked up for three or four seasons and stuff like that. And then it's over. And then you have to move to Georgia or you have to move, you know, you don't have to if you want to work, you know, you move to Georgia, or Hawaii, wherever you, wherever the jobs are, right? Um, my first love was soap opera, Guiding Light. Um, uh -huh. And I always had that feeling of, of home with soap operas. Um, I didn't know I was going to go back on one. Um, but when Frank gave me a call and said, you know, there's this part and I, I felt an immediate, like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm going home because it's very, um, you go to the same place. You, you know, the people you're not moving all the time. It, it was like, I was a gypsy before you have a home, you have, you get to have a dog, you know, before I couldn't have a dog because you're, you're living in all these different states and stuff. So, um, yeah, I really, I really, I have a habit of answering your questions and then forgetting what the question was and then just going, I hope I answered it. Um, oh, but I do miss comedy, but I wouldn't change what I'm doing right now for anything. I'm very, very happy. Um, on the soap and playing Nina. I love it when you bring comedy to a, a situation that you're on in general, because as we all do, I mean, one time, not here, but I, I was getting yelled at by an editor. And, um, and I just said, when the situation was presented to me, I said, uh-oh. And the editor said, yes, uh-oh. And I thought, I mean, you know, let's, let's try to laugh. Like, yeah. Can we laugh? Yeah. And I think through life, when we are faced with tough things to throw a little levity into it, to get through it is a great thing. So when you do that, that just to me makes the drama all the more real. Yeah. I agree, Michael. Shame on that editor. I'll, I'll slack you later. I'll, I'll send you a text. <laughs> um, I'm scrolling through some questions. Oh, uh, San Willie had a great question. Um, uh, what do you do? Do you, do you not like to cook? And if so, what do you do to, uh, to eat? You must have, asked, you must have, did you watch when I said, I don't like to cook. I don't yes. Sam um, saw that. Yes. Isn't it funny that I was ashamed to admit that for the longest time? Like I wanted to be one of those people who were like, I totally like to cook and I make these. I never, I mean, I cooked because I had kids and you're not supposed to let them starve. So I would cook them meals because I love them, but I never really enjoyed it. You know, um, I, I like salads. So it's super easy. I like salads and I like, I like boring stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, if you're a foodie, you might not want to go out with me because you'll be like, we're going at this like amazing Italian restaurant. And I'd be like, uh, do they have a chopped salad? You'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe. So um, yeah, I'm not, I'm very simple, simple <laughs> food wise. You got the sweater going on, Michael. You got the mug going on. I got, I got the, my, yes, this is a, been in the family forever. 
and um, and this is not only just a great Christmas sweater, but it's a great ugly Christmas sweater because it's got a you shark. Got shark. Nothing says Christmas more than a shark. Great I mean, um, I wanted to <clears throat> mention that next year, which is coming, and we'll be here before we know it in April, around 14th and 15th, and on April 16th, Cynthia will be appearing in New York and New Jersey for all of you who are in the tri-state area. And um, let me get this straight. On April 14th and 15th, she will be there with Mara West. And on April 16th, she will be with Mora, Laura Wright, and Eden McCoy. By the way, I thought you guys were kick-ass on Friday. I thought that was such a great scene, series of scenes we're doing. And um, for details, everyone can go to coastalentertainment.com slash events check that out and they also have a lot of other great events there with your favorite gh stars it's going to be so much fun i can't tell you how much i'm looking forward to having the we're, we're all mora and all the ladies it's going to be um so much fun and be right around the time of the 60th anniversary too yeah we're already like talking a lot about that and um getting ready for that That'll it's be amazing. amazing, right? It's amazing. Yeah. It's hard to believe 60 years. Mm -hmm. um, sweet. Uh, were there any other, just check the chat, see if we have any other questions. Um, I think there's one from plenty, but I think it's, uh, Cynthia, you have been so amazing. Yes. And we don't want, we could keep you forever and, but I, we won't do that to you. No. Um, <laughs> I... Let me just say, thank you everyone for coming uh, on this Monday and whether you love Nina or she gets on your nerves or you hate Nina, I just appreciate all of you so much for watching the show and, um, and whatever this holiday is for you, just know that you're amazing. Stay with yourself. Try to do some breathing techniques. I'll I'll redo this one on my how about on Instagram to remind you guys. But no, it doesn't, you don't have to be happy. Don't you don't have to have a perfect family. Just stay with yourself and know you're amazing and um, do what you want to do. And if you're alone, there are a lot of you know shelters and out there that you can go and um I did that for Thanksgiving, that they're so appreciative of any help. So go and, and volunteer. And if, if you're alone and you don't want to be alone, because some people just want to be alone. But if you're alone and you don't want to be alone, go and check out um, some of these uh, uh, local charities and shelters and stuff, because um, they really need your help. But I love you all so much. Can we, uh, can we un unmute everyone and uh, get some applause? Yay! Thank you so much. Thank 